Hey everybody, my name is Jen and I am here at the very fancy YouTube Spaces. You can see I have a fancy badge here. Uh, <laughs> to check out the space and also to make for you a crafting tutorial. What we are going to do today is make comics magnets because whose fridge does not need more comics on it? I ask you. All of them do. I am pretty sure. So, I made a couple of preliminary ones for you. We will do close-ups in a minute. Uh, but what I'm going to show you also is how to do it from scratch. All right, so let's get started. The first, this is a very basic level of craft. Some of you who are very good at crafting will be like, I can do that better. And maybe you can, and that's awesome. Some of you who may be afraid of crafting hopefully will see that there's nothing to be afraid of. Every craft can be done. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is to gather your supplies. So what are our supplies today? We have scissors, we have Mod Podge, which is magic, by the way. Um, it is a glue and a sealant, and it's water-based. I don't know why anybody uses anything else. Scotch tape, because you should always have scotch tape. You need a paintbrush. I needed a flattening edge, so I have this like palette scraper. If you have a bone folder, if you are crafty like that, you could use that. Um, a really, a credit card, anything with a flat edge that you can use to smooth things out. A Sharpie, because you never know when you're going to need a Sharpie. You need magnet paper, which literally is looks like a piece of paper that is also a magnet. Um, it has a adhesive sticker side, right? There's like a cover so that things don't stick to it until you're ready for them to stick. They comes in different thicknesses so you can get super sturdy ones if you like. This is very bendy as you can see and is very easy to cut. So I often stock up on this stuff. Should be available at any craft store, Joann's, Michael's, wherever you get your crafting supplies. We need backing paper. Sometimes I use books for that because I am not precious about them. I will cut up anything and everything if I feel like it will look good in a craft. Uh, you need something to work on top of so you don't ruin your table surface. I just have an old piece of paper that I've already worked on top of and that's what I'm using. Uh, but you want something that's easy to clean or easy to throw away. And then, since we're doing comics, you need some comics. I am using Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur because I love it and I'm going to buy the trade anyway so I might as well get some use out of my issues while I still have them. And we're going to make a Moon Girl magnet. That is what we are going to do. Obviously, the first thing we need, to do, we need to do is select and cut out our comic. So I have decided to use Moon Girl from the back of the comic. So you take your scissors. And I like to cut around it first. Some people at this point would go to an X-Acto knife. Those people are awesome. I do not have steady enough hands to do exacto knife work. So what I do when I'm cutting my comic is I leave a little bit of a margin. I'm not gonna try to stick right to her edges. I am going to give myself a little white space. A little room for error. Ta-da! We have cut out our comics character. Now we need to decide what background she's going on. I like to have a background because it gives me even a little more margin for error and it makes it look fun. So for your background paper, you can use origami paper if you have that. You can use old books like this copy of Hamlet that I have disemboweled. Um, you can use uh, some nice crafting paper. I kind of actually really like this green for Lunetta, so I think that is what I'm going to go with today. So if you are feeling precise, you well, you can do this a bunch of different ways. Do you want a square magnet? Cut your background square. Do you want some funky kind of star shapes like we did with Jen? You can do it that way. You can kind of, I'm just going to kind of outline what I already have done here because that sounds nice and easy and fun. So I'm just gonna draw around her um, and then cut inside my drawing so you don't get the black edges. Again, very straightforward. There are fancier ways to do this. Feel free to use them. You can also do that with a pencil and then erase it. But I didn't bring pencil to the YouTube space today. So, Sharpie it is. Ta-da! 
All right, so now we need to attach our comics character to its background paper, which we're gonna do with Mod Podge. Surprise. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Mod Podge and you're gonna put some on the back of your comics paper. You want to be careful at this stage and this is where tears happen because as soon as comics paper gets wet it gets a little bit delicate. Okay so we just kind of smear it around get it on there and then we place her on her background paper and then we take our edge and we do that so that she's nice and flat and there are no bubbles. You don't want to do it too hard, you might tear it. And if you missed a spot and you don't feel like the glue is spread properly, do not worry because there's another glue step involved. And there we go. Don't worry about getting glue on it, we're going to put more on it. <laughs> because Mod Podge is also a sealant, if you remember from earlier. It is not just a glue. So now we have Lunella on her background. Alright, next part, very straightforward. Attach her to a comic sheet. Ta-da! I have one I've been working with a little bit, so we'll use that. So what you want to do is get a space of comic sheet that is the size you need. So what I'm going to do is cut, again, around more than I need. And then you peel and attach and trim. If you try to get it precise while your figure is not attached, it's going to move around. Even if you tape it, it's still probably going to move around. So you're going to have a little waste, but it's okay. This step is not particularly expensive. Okay, so we peel away the backing. You got your sticky side up. And we attach our backing paper to the magnet. Oh my god, it's all happening. Okay, ta-da! And now we trim. And this is another time when it's nice to have extra backing space because if you cut a little over, oh my god, it's fine, it's fine. Ta-da! One more step to go. Okay, last step is Mod Podge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make ourselves a little pool of Mod Podge on our prep surface. We're gonna take our paintbrush, which I only use for Mod Podge. It's a little gnarly because I don't wash it as much as I should, but it works very nicely. We're gonna put our magnet on top of the prep surface as well so we don't get Mod Podge all over YouTube's nice table. And then you're gonna start sealing over top of it. You're just brushing a thin layer of Mod Podge over the top of your magnet. Doing this helps get down any edges that you missed. It also helps seal the magnet. So for example, if it got wet, um, it is less likely to be ruined. It, if you had any smudges from when you're initial gluing, they disappear. It dries clear. It's meant for this. This is what it's for. So you're not doing anything weird here. And I buy the matte kind. There is a high gloss Mod Podge if that is more of your jam. All right. So you can see, you can see it now. Well, you can't see it. But you could see it if you were closer. Um, but it's going to dry clear. Now you leave that to dry somewhere where it doesn't matter if it gets all gluey. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jen, those magnets are adhesive. Why would you just not paste it directly on there? And you could do that. You could absolutely do that. You could take your cutout, you could stick it on the magnet, and then you could cut around it. Yes, I still recommend you seal it with Mod Podge. It will just help protect it from the elements slash the juice that you accidentally spilled on your fridge. Um, but you could do it that way. I really like having the colors of the backing paper a lot. I think it looks fun and you can do funky things with it. Like for example, with my gem magnets, you can write on it um, and it looks cool. So it's really up to you. But yes, that would shortcut this process quite a bit. Uh, your call. There's no right answer. There's only what makes you happy in crafting. All is fair. Okay, and that's it.